100,000 Canadian Uber drivers, listen up. Firstly, I want your subscription. Subscribe to my channel. I'm fighting for you, right? So the surprising agreement between Uber and UFCW in Canada in legal context. You want to know what? The UFCW is selling you out. they meeting up at night, Dara Koshishawi and, and, and the head of the UFCW, and they're sleeping together. I don't know what they're doing in bed together, but they're sleeping together and they are shafting you. And thanks now that the facts are coming out and more reporters are shedding light on this, right? Um, what is going on here? This sounds very, very fishy. And usually when something is fishy and smells fishy, that's what it is. It's fishy, right? So um, this, you know, union, no, it's, 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 it's a bought out deal because there's a hidden agenda by Uber and it involves a lot of money for the UFCW. So cut ties, drivers, with this organization. They are not representing you in the truest form. Last week, Uber Canada and UFCW Canada made a surprise announcement, right? Surprise announcement that they had reached a historic national agreement. Right, we should we should know better for representation rights affecting some one hundred thousand Uber workers in Canada. Canada, hit me up. Subscribe so that we can keep you informed. The agreement has not been made public yet. Oh, I wonder why. I just wonder why the agreement has not been made public yet. Right, but the press releases provide some details. Under the agreement, Uber recognizes a right of UFCW to represent drivers and couriers in Uber's dispute resolution process regarding account-related disputes. If you have account-related dispute, come to GigRocket. We'll whip them into place, right? Um, such as complaints about wrongful deactivation. We handle that, including before third-party arbitrators, really third-party arbitrators that... Uber, by the way, I bet you they pay for it, right? The cost of this representation and of the arbitration will apparently be borne by Uber. There we go. I just said it, right? And UFCW and, and free to any driver who opts for UFCW representation. Oh, you know, come and opt for the representation. And if the crap hits the fan, we'll pay for you. But we control the outcome. I mean, come on, man. We're not that stupid, are we? Canadian drivers, wake up. The agreement also permits UFCW to meet with Uber on a regular basis to discuss health, safety, and other related issues. Yeah, like, like, hey, let's meet and talk about health, safety, and other related issues. By the way, what do you want? Do you want a margarita or a bottle of wine? That's all they care about, right? It's, it's, it's another excuse for a lunch or for some drinks, but you honestly think they're going to discuss health, safety, and other related issues in exchange for these representational rights, UFCW agreed. Here we go. Now we're getting down to the bottom of it, right? Here we go. In exchange for these representational rights, UFCW agreed to help Uber Lobby governments. You serious UFCW? This is how you're going to throw drivers. You're going to pretend, oh, like we're going to take care of you. And then you're lobbying for the company and governments to screw the driver. Here, man. Here. In fact, let me give you the royal one. Right? The royal one. Here. Are you listening? UFC, whatever your name is. Right? Here. Let me give you the, the one and only one you deserve, right? And that's the middle finger. So go and sit and swivel on this UFCW, right? If you think that you're going to have the guy sign up, you're going to have drivers sign up. And, and when they agree to that sign up with you, then you go out and help Uber lobby governments to enact reforms that provide new benefits and preserve worker choice on when, where, and if, where to work, and you're not even disclosing the ins and outs of that contract, sit 
and Swivel, UFCW president and Dara Kosha Shali, right? If you think that the Canadian drivers are, 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 are stupid to fall for this BS, right? They're going to sign up with you and then you're going to go and throw them under the bus. You're going to literally drive over them with the bus, with the Uber bus and with the UFCW. You know, drive over the driver and reverse over the driver. F you. Um, so this sounds like a promise made by UFCW to help Uber's lobbying efforts. Hello. Hello. That's what it is. Hello. This sounds like a promise made by UFCW to help Uber's lobbying efforts to persuade Canadian governments to adopt its flexible plus model. Flexible my ass model, which would cover Uber drivers for some but not all labor legislation protection. So, you know, Canada, step up, man. Government in Canada, step up. You're going to literally throw 100,000 drivers under the bus. Are you willing to do that? If that's what they're going to do to you, drivers in Canada, you vote them out. I don't know who's in power, who's running the show. You vote them out if they throw you under the bus, right? So, um other unions in Canada have been fighting hard against Uber's proposed model, and there is concern that the Ontario government is leaning towards opting a third category approach in impending legislative reform. In fact, UFCW has sided with Uber in these reforms. Really, I wonder why you sided. How much money did you get? How about let's disclose that first? You know, so be honest here, the head of the UFCW, how much money did Uber pay you? Right. Can, can someone in Canada find that out? What did they pay the UFCW to buy their vote? Drivers do not. Canadian drivers do not fall for this BS. It will no doubt be considered a shocking betrayal of labor solidarity by much of the Canadian labor rights community. Pre-recognition representation agreements are relatively rare, but not without precedent in Canada. For example, in 2008, the Canadian Auto Workers Union entered into a form of neutrality agreement, blah, 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 blah. The legal framework, as a general rule, no legal issues arise from an agreement by a union to team up with an employer to promote a certain legislative agenda. If Uber and UFCW agree on how the law should be reformed, they are free to work jointly to promote that reform. Nor does Canadian labor law prohibit an employer from permitting its employees to be represented in disciplinary hearings by a third party, including a union representative. Therefore, as a starting point, there is nothing on the face of the Uber UFCW agreement that jumps out as unlawful. But based on what we know so far and without seeing the agreement, however, while representation agreements between unions and employers are not per se unlawful in Canadian labor law, several interesting legal issues can arise from them. As a starting point, it is important to understand that under Canadian labor law, Uber drivers are most likely already employees for the purposes of collecting bargaining statutes. That's because, as I explained in an earlier on labor post, most provinces include dependent contractors within the statutory definition of employee. While there may be legitimate questions about whether Uber drivers meet the common law definition of employee, there is a strong likelihood that they are dependent contractors. It came as little surprise, for example, that the Ontario Labor's Relation Board ruled recently that Fudora couriers were employees and covered by the Provincial Labor Relations Act. It would be surprising if Uber drivers are not similarly ruled to dependent contractors in cases currently pending before the Ontario Board. The fact that Uber drivers are probably already covered by provincial collective bargaining laws in Canada uh, situates, situates the new Uber UFCW agreement into a particular legal context. Labor laws apply, including provincial unfair labor practice provisions. The next important part of the story 
is that UFCW is not the only union that has been active organizing Uber drivers and couriers. For example, Gig Workers United, an organizing arm of the Canadian Union of Postal Workers, CUPW, has strong presence in the industry. The sudden announcement of Uber's special deal with UFCW came as a complete surprise to other unions in the sector. The fact that multiple unions are active organizing Uber drivers and that Uber has now given special access and representation rights to only one of those unions. Why do you think they gave it to one of those unions, the biggest one? Why do you think? You tell me. Why do you think they gave it to them? So this raises interesting legal issues. Potential problems arise from the fact that the Canadian labor legislation like the NLRA prohibits employers from participating in or interfering with the administration or selection of a union. Um, the law exists to prevent employers from giving preference to one union over everything here smells bogus. Everything here smells BS, right? On the day that the agreement was publicly announced, Uber sent an electronic message to all of its drivers to share the good news. Oh, you, you know when that message comes from Uber, it's good news. Give me a break, Dara Kosha, shall we? Seriously, bearer of the bad news, right? About what today's Uber Canada, UFCW Canada agreement means for building a better future for drivers. Really, are they building a better future for you, Canadian drivers? Answer me this, please. Please share this. The announcement explained to workers that they could opt to have UFC representation for free. Oh yeah, it's for free. And then we're going to throw you under the bus, right? Um, and that UFCW would act as worker voice on health and safety matters. Essentially, Uber has now urged employees to contact UFCW. These actions appear on their face to constitute support for UFCW. Don't support them, folks. Walk away. The, um, of the sort of Canadian unfair labor practice provisions expressly prohibit um, labor boards have interpreted these provisions purposively and have permitted some types of cooperation between employers and unions, especially employers support to unions that already represent the employees. However, labor boards become concerned when the support, when the support takes the form of giving one union preference during a live organizing campaign involving multiple unions. We may be into that scenario now. For example, what if CUPW advises Uber that it represents 200 of its drivers in Canada and demands the same representational rights just granted to UFCW, including a communication sent to all drivers that have the option to be represented by CUPW as well as UFCW. A refusal to grant this request could expose Uber to an unfair labor practice compliant alleging unlawful support for UFCW and interference in the selection of a union. Now, the same crap is happening in Boston. I've spoken to some of the unions, right? Or people that are, you know, there is definitely money and there's definitely favoritism, right? So whatever, what, what we've learned from Uber is whatever they're telling you, you do exactly the opposite or, or exactly the opposite is true. A related issue would arise if UFCW seeks to use its newfound access to Uber drivers to mount a formal, formal unionization campaign and application for certification. Under Canadian labor law, in some provinces, a union cannot be certified if it has received employer support, and a contract is not a collective agreement if the employer provided support to the union for example, see section 53 of the OLRA. This means that by entering into a side representation agreement with Uber, UFCW has possibly sacrificed the possibility of it later attempting to become a legal collective bargaining representative of Canadian Uber drivers. Canadian Uber drivers do not fall for this nonsense. This short post has flagged just a few of the legal issues that could arise from the surprising new agreement between Uber and UFCW in Canada. It stinks. It absolutely stinks, this agreement. As to the larger question of whether the agreement will ultimately benefit Uber drivers, the jury is out. I have my doubts, ends the writer.
I have my doubts. You should have your doubts, right? So um, feel free to share with our Canadian brothers and sisters and please everybody chime in here. And the same nonsense is happening here in the United States. Be safe, my friends.